now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex Bennett. This is the Ramble, and we're here until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, out to California and uh, in a uh, uh, nursing home, is it? Are you in a nursing home? Is that where you are, Will? A boarding care. Yeah, and we're just seeing his eye because I'm trying to get... my left eye. Yeah. Because it's kind of hard lying there, isn't it? And getting a full picture of it. Yeah. 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 yeah uh, uh, tell them. Tell, tell them about what's happening right now. Uh, your your one of your legs. My leg is my left leg fell out of bed. <laughs> and I can't put it back. Yeah, that's that's the bad leg, right? That's the bad leg. Yeah. Well, now, uh, being that that's it's the leg that won't rejoin the bad. <laughs> In case people don't know, um, uh, Will had a uh, a stroke. Um, I had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Will, you had a stroke. I know you didn't know how to tell me. Yeah, I, I hate to break the news to you. Oh wow! And so he went through all kinds of, uh, as in the Jewish religion, we call it mishigas. And and uh, he had to have what he drilled holes in your brain and no, not holes in my brain, holes in my skull. Oh, okay. What? So they could use you as a bowling ball? Uh, no. So they could carpet sweep all the. Uh, they put a, a device in my skull to sweep all the blood and spinal fluid out, and then they put a hole in there for a drain. Wow. Yeah. Was that yucky? I don't remember any of okay, it. Okay, you don't remember any of it. Okay. That's a good that's a good question I have though. Try and show us more of your face if you can. If you can. Uh, yeah. I can't. Just, just otherwise people won't believe I'm talking to Will Durst. There we go. Um so he Hang on a sec. I'll, let me move this pillow. Oh, uh, okay. He's going to move the pillow now. Uh, there we go. Um Okay, he's uh, taking... Oh, there, that's much better. Now turn your camera sideways. There we go, and uh, there, there, that's much, much, much better. There's Will... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, there's Will Durst. Anyway, okay, we're in business. Anyway, I asked you as we were talking yesterday, and I asked you this. Uh, what, do you remember the actual stroke? I mean, or, or uh, is a lot of that period of time kind of... Erased no, no, itself. I remember. I, uh, I had reparked my car. Yeah. And I was trying to uh, open it because I left my uh, my beer. Uh, no, my uh, I, left, I left some. I left my cup of coffee in the car. Okay. So I was trying to reopen it, but I couldn't move to the car. My feet refused to follow. So I was dancing in the street, on the driver's side of my car. Oh God! Trying to get to the door. Wow, Jesus! Yeah. And, and so then I went inside backstage, and uh, I tried to sit down and missed the chair. Wow! And somebody said, uh, "Are you all right?" I said, "I don't know what's wrong." And uh, then somebody else said, "My mom's a doctor, and she's in the audience." So it was literally, you know, is there a doctor in the house? There was a doctor in the house. And she probably wound up saving your life, right? Yeah. And then they called an ambulance, and the ambulance took me to St. Mary's, and they didn't have a neurological division, so they took me to the UC. Wow. Yeah. And, the, and, around. and then the nobody watered me. The adventure began. Wow, that's amazing. We're back seeing your eye again, by the way. Oh, sorry. And <laughs> I was on a 
they thought I was going to die. Of course, you know, these kind of things, they always think you're going to die at one point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, 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 well, I mean... I needed, I needed uh, a respirator. Wait a minute, you're being attacked by your pillow. I am. <laughs> there, we, there we go. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, 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 there. Anyway, um, so, I mean, we, we've told this story before, but I just, what I was curious about is sometimes when horrible things happen to people, somehow the body is a way of dealing with it. Uh, your brain kind of makes that incident disappear in your mind and you can't remember it happening, you know. But in your case, you can, you seem to remember it rather Living, you know, uh, vividly. Well, I was supposed to go on stage. I was, uh, uh, it was a benefit for the Mime Troop, San Francisco Mime Troop. Yeah. Their 60th anniversary or something. Yeah. And I was supposed to go on stage and I wanted to tell my little jokes and they wouldn't let me go on stage. You wanted to do your act anyway. Yeah. That's a showbiz spirit. I've had a stroke, but I'm going on anyway. The San Francisco <clears throat> Bime Troop, which talks. Yes, yes. That's so San Francisco. I would want to make a joke about that, about you had a stroke and the Mime Troop was going, you know. Ah. Uh, but uh, the, uh, we all know that the San Francisco Mime Troop actually talks. And talks and talks and talks. But how do they, how do they... Ow, ow, ow. What? My leg. Your, your leg is hurting? Hello? Huh? Wait a minute, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Little Can't. help. Please, somebody help. He needs his leg in the bed. I, I know it hurts. Can't they hear you? And you don't have a button to push? No, my button's battery died. Oh, boy. You, the button's battery died. They didn't replace the battery. Hello? No, I don't even know where the button is anymore. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah. Here can you go. get my leg in? Ah, thank you. Yeah, uh, much better. Thank you. You're welcome. You want me to lift the bed up at all? No, I'm good. This is Evan. Oh. Uh, this is uh, Alex Bennett doing a interview. Hi. Hi. How, How are you doing? Good. We're we're doing fine here. It's just that uh, well, finally came. Yeah. Well, how long have you been hanging? Uh, a while. Oh damn. All right. Well, yeah. Sorry. Just came back from lunch. Uh, yeah. Sorry. How was lunch? Yeah. It's all right. But well, your lunch is coming soon. I haven't had breakfast yet. You slept through it. I slept through it. Yes. Hmm. You didn't wake me for food? <laughs> <laughs> they do on airlines. Stop doing it. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they do. You want me to get some coffee? Well, yeah. Do you have any coffee? Yeah. I'll go get you. Uh, that, right I even have an empty cup. Not yet. But it'll be filled now. Thank you. Gee, when I was in the hospital, they used to wake me to feed me. You know? I, I was in the hospital for about four days with a, a kidney stone, and they would they would wake me up. They woke woke me up in the middle of the night to draw blood. You know, so anyway, so yeah, I missed breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only decent meal of the day. Really, really. So anyway, let me ask you this: You're lying there in bed. There's got to be tons of material floating around in your head. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure there are times you say, Gee, God, I wish I were on a stage somewhere. I wish I could get to a typewriter. I wish I could type. Uh, and, and you can't. And, and yet you've got all this stuff in your brain, right? Yeah, well, I'm trying to write a COVID uh, set. You're trying to write a COVID set. Yeah. Now, is there anything funny about COVID? Because I'm, I'm sorry, I don't think I've been able to come up with a COVID joke. Well, 
just the CDC, the guidelines sounded like my mother's advice in junior high school. Oh, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. <laughs> don't go out with strangers. You don't know where they've been. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So that was that was pretty much, uh, I think, why everybody ignored them. Why? Because they sounded like their mother. Yeah. yeah. At the first. Yeah. Wash your hands. No, they're dirty again. I can I can see from here. You're not coming to my table with those hands. <laughs> Anything else you found funny about COVID? No, actually. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of hard to make jokes about it. I mean that 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 happens to be a pretty good routine about. Except for the uh, the the Trumpers, the the bleach eaters. Yeah. Well, yeah. They were more, they were morons. They still are. They won't wear the masks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, now you say you spend most of your day watching news, right? Yeah, and movies. Yeah, but I mean, the, I just saw Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. How was it? I want to watch that. Uh, Viola Davis is going to get her second Oscar. Okay. And Chadwick Boseman is going to get one posthumously. Really, that good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You suggested a movie to me. I've been watching this show called uh, uh, His Dark Materials. Uh, and um, you, oh, yeah. you said that it was ba it, there was a movie of it called The Gold Compass. So yeah, I went, did you find it? I went and found it. We watched it last night. And, you know, usually when you really like a show like his, med, his, uh, his uh, whatever, whatever, uh, dark materials. Dark materials. Uh, you you would then go and watch the movie that was made of it earlier, and you go, eh, you know, eh. this TV show, the look of it and the feel of it and all of it, was based on that movie. It's a very oh, good no, movie. Yeah. It's a very good movie. It doesn't go as far as the TV series does, because it's encompassing all the books the guy wrote. Yeah, and there's a secondary well, there's a secondary storyline about a, a a kid, a male kid, in real London, and meets up with Lyra. And that story wasn't in there, but they were making no, a movie, and they, they had, had they had the polar bear. They had oh the polar bear is a big part of it in the uh, in the TV show. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that whole storyline. So except, you know, I mean, but the way they animated the, the, the demons and the, the way they uh, voiced the demons, identical to the TV show. Identical. So well, I like the movie. Yeah. Well, the TV show is simply uh, a, a, an extension, I think, of the movie. But I, I guess the movie was supposed to be a bunch of uh, sequels and so on because they leave it open-ended. And I guess yeah, it, they had they had plans to make uh, part two and part three, mm -hmm. and they were going to shoot them together. And you know, there was one guy at the studio who was looking at the box office receipts, and he was going to press a button or not on Monday morning mm -hmm. to green light, to, you know, part two and part three. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't press the button. Wow. Because uh, box office receipts were so so meager. Yeah, wow. They couldn't see doing sequels. Well, anyway, the sequels are being done, but they're being done on HBO. You know, but they, uh, but they had to tell the start of the story. The story here in the movie ends with the polar bear's big fight with the, to get the kids out of the place where they're being held. Uh, and, the education camp. Yeah. yeah. And that is maybe two, three quarters through the first season, okay? So there's oh, wow. there's How much many seasons are there? There's much more. Oh well, they're in their uh, what is it? Is this their second season or third season? I think it's their second season. Yeah, it's their, their second. There's no, maybe not. I don't know. I I have to look. I don't uh, I don't remember. Um, and who plays the evil woman? 
Um, uh, uh, what's her name? Ruth Wilson. Do you know who okay. Ruth Wilson is? Yeah. Yeah. She's no Nicole Kidman. No, she's, she's much Ruth. better than Nicole Kidman. Yeah. She's eat because she has a really the trouble with Ruth Wilson is every part she ever plays is a bad person because she has a bad person look. Uh, Nicole Kidman's a little too glamorous to be accepted as being a bad woman. Uh, but I was amazed at all the people who were in this movie. Christopher Lee was in it, for crying out loud. You know? So, we were losing your face again. Yeah, wasn't Liam Neeson in it? Uh, no. Wasn't Liam Neeson, no. Uh, it was uh, Daniel Craig. Played oh, right. the father. James Bond was in it. Yeah, yeah, so... But anyway, thanks for recommending it. It it was just we were we were just amazed by it. We sat there and watched the whole thing. Didn't even oh, watch cool. didn't even watch sixty minutes last night. So so anyway, so what is your daily life like? I mean, you're doing a lot of bed lying, right? Yeah, they get me up for meals usually. Yeah. But you also are you capable of using a wheelchair? Yeah, they put me in the wheelchair. Yeah, but we, and, then, and and there's a there's a guy here, an ex marine, who controls uh, the TV in the dining room, and uh, he's a big uh, NCIS fan. So we're watching NCIS on a virtual loop. <laughs> so so here's the thing. Here here's my 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 sixteen question. seasons. You use a wheelchair, but you don't wheel it, do you? I don't know. No, because one of your hands isn't working. So right, that would mean you, you would just keep going in circles, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tight circles. Yeah. But let's see your face again. There we go. Oh. Uh, wait a minute. What, you, All right. wait. You have tr he has, the reason he's having trouble with the iPad, folks, is that he has only one hand working. And so he you can has. hold it with one hand. You have to hold it with one hand, which can be difficult at times. I don't know if people have ever had to hold an iPad. Uh, and, uh, you know, I guess if you folded it or something, you could rest it on your stomach, but, you know. Um, so so it, it, you basically your life is lying in bed for the most part, right? Yeah, watching the news. Yeah. And, and then Debbie comes and gets you and takes you to uh, physical therapy. Yeah, she's coming today. Yeah, and and, and how do you do that? She they wheel you to the car, and then you get in the car, and then on the other end they have another wheelchair. No, there's a, a ramp taxi, uh, a cab with a, a oh. back for a wheelchair. Okay, so you take the wheelchair and everything with you. Yeah. Yeah. What if you don't come back? Do they charge you for the wheelchair? We're renting the wheelchair. Are you? You're renting it. Yeah. Is that part of the, who's renting it to you? The nursing home. No, it's a place called A to Z uh -huh. Hospital. So we're renting the the bed, and then there's a claw to get me, you know, from uh, from the first Toy Story. Mm -hmm. Oh no, the claw, the claw, <laughs> and. So they put a cargo net around me, mm -hmm. and then they lift me with the claw into the wheelchair. Yeah. So and listen, let's uh, let's let's get political for a second, okay? I th I don't think you mind getting political for a second, do you? No. Uh, what do you think of Biden? Do you think he's going to do a good job? Well, it sucks for me. It's good for the country, but it sucks for me. Why does it suck for you? Because Trump was like a steak buffet. <laughs> oh, know? I see. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Biden is... Uh, he's breakfast cereal. Yeah. Yeah, he's oatmeal. Yeah, he's an oatmeal. So, you, 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 But is, is the reason why Trump was a buffet for you is because you're to the left politically and so... He was somebody to make fun of, but if you were to the right, he probably wouldn't have been the same kind of buffet, right? 
Do you, you hear me? Yeah, no. He 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 would make mistakes that were just mistakes, whether you were on the left or right, and you know. Yeah. He would. He was he was just wonderful, and Biden <laughs> is uh, not Biden. Not gonna be. Biden is. Uh, we're going to be bored by Biden. He's not going to be. I think so too. Yeah, he's yeah. not going to be exciting. He, he, but I don't care. I want. I don't care if I have a boring president. Just as long as he does his job. I didn't. You know. No, I think people were tired of the chaos. Oh, we were exhausted by the chaos. Will, uh -huh. I if I had to one night more night go on the air here and talk about Trump. I mean, every night for four years, somewhere along the line in the show, Trump came up. Because Trump always dominated the news cycle, and he made sure that he did. You know, most presidents don't want to dominate the the, the, the news cycle. I mean, they, no, they, they want to hide behind it. Well, with Obama, there were we went for weeks without hearing from Obama. He just did his job. There was no scandal either. I remember Fox News went crazy because he wore a beige suit. Yeah, or the or the mama the what the uh, mom's jeans or something once mom jeans yeah. yeah that's what they would go crazy over but they couldn't go crazy over anything he said there was no hint of scandal in that White House uh, maybe maybe the most moral White House we've had I mean he had a wonderful family and a wonderful wife and you know there was no hint of any kind of improprieties where his marriage was concerned for instance. Every other president, we kind of hear something. Clinton, certainly. Bush, uh, more about Daddy Bush. Daddy Bush had some kind of an affair going on in New York City, didn't he? Yeah. So. Rumor has it. Yeah, but you know, still, we we Bush was very hated because of the way he was handling the Mid East and so on and so forth. And yet, you know, I my my joke has been. Uh, uh, my little routine has been to say that, well, you know, now that we have had Trump, I guess Bush doesn't look that bad. In fact, uh, neither does uh, 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 Reagan or Nixon, perhaps even Hitler. <laughs> you know, even William look, Henry Harrison. Huh? Doesn't look that bad. None of these people look that bad by comparison. I mean, this was well, the Harrison gave a three hour inaugural speech in the rain, cut pneumonia and died, and died 31 days into his uh, presidency. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I mean, I just I just hope that, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, that no we... Biden is going to be uh, boring. Yeah, and I think he. And, I think and America is ready for Uncle Joe. And it's you know? question if Uncle Joe is up to the task because the job he's got ahead of him, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. He's got so much to fix that if he doesn't fix it all, some people are going to be very disappointed. But you know, I mean, Trump literally came in and ruined the country. Well, yeah, killing three thousand people. Yeah, killing three. Yeah, we're dead because of him. Okay. The Trump flu. Yeah, yeah the Trump flu. What is it? Thirty, well, one hundred and thirteen, uh, three hundred thirteen million dead as uh, of the moment that we're recording this. It'll probably be up to three hundred and sixteen or something. You know, whatever. But um, well, you're looking. Well, I, w I would like to say you're looking good, but, you know, you've been lying in bed all this time. and I'm wearing a pillow. With and a you hat. still haven't gotten the haircut. Still haven't gotten the haircut. Oh, you said you're waiting until the 20th. Yeah. Yeah. He said he would not get a haircut. And this was how many years ago? Well, the, it was 2017. 2017. He said he would not get a haircut till Trump was out of office. So he's waiting to the 20th. So he hasn't even got a COVID haircut. That's just... A COVID haircut on top of a uh, Trump haircut. So, you know. Are you looking forward to it, though? Mm. You don't care at this point. Nah. Nah. I well, can wear a ponytail. I can have one of those gray ponytails. Mm. Well, listen, we kind of run out of time here. 
I just want to talk to you again in the audience. Oh, buddy. The, I'm uh, so sorry. I wasted your time. No, you're, the audience loves hearing from you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because they used to hear from me every couple of weeks, and then all of a sudden Mr. Mr. Stroke has his stroke, and uh, uh, we couldn't hear from you. And then when we finally heard from you, boy, they were just thrilled, just thrilled. So every, everybody was rooting for you, you know, um, because we all need a good guy to root for in this day and age. But Oh, well, there you go. That's who I am. Why don't we talk again in a couple of weeks, you know? I'm in. You're in as long as your leg isn't out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, might, uh, I might be home by then. From his hospital bed in San Francisco, California, at some anonymous nursing home, it's Will Durst recovering from, you had a stroke, Will. I had a stroke. Well, thank you very much. Will Durst, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, Will. Bye, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I love, I, I love talking to Will. You know, it, it, it is so invigorating to know that each, each time we talk to him, he's a little bit better. Today, uh, today this latest um, round of discussion we had, I think he was a little on the tired side. You know, uh, he spends so much time in bed that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an effort. And, um, but I, I just love talking to him and hearing him get better, even by measures. Uh, he told me his hand is starting to work a little bit, and uh, he also said that uh, that the leg is it's not working yet. But he's the idea is to be able to stand on it, okay? And uh, God, I want I just want to see him back on stage doing his comedy, doing what he loves to do best. I. You know, I know what it's like as a performer to not be able to have your facilities to be able to do your your life's work. But anyway, I think it's time for us to check in on a whole bunch of people here. And there are tons of them right now. Well, not tons, but certainly a lot. So we will just watch them start popping in here as they start popping. There we are. There's, uh, there's uh, Alan, and there's uh, Robert, and there's uh, Jeffrey Stein, and there's Brian Neary, and there's Trucker Steve and his uh, sidekick, and we're waiting for Charlie Wallace to, um, to uh, jump in here as soon as he figures out that we are not doing the interview any longer. And, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, he, oh, we have Tom Yamaguchi is uh, coming in here. Uh, so, uh, boy, we're off to a roaring start. Hello, Tom. We haven't seen you in a while. Tom, can you hey. hear, can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, uh, we haven't heard from you in a while. How you doing? I'm hanging in there. Yeah. Figure you yeah. Glad we're all, we're all pulling for, for, uh, for Will Durst, yeah. uh, even Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yes. Stroke, stroke, stroke. <laughs> bail, bail, bail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's good. It's good to just see him. And I talk to him on a rather constant basis. And uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's reassuring to see that he's getting better by, by measures. Uh, but he just wants to get home. He just wants to get out of there. You know, I'm lying on your back for the better part of over a year has mm -hmm. got to just be daunting. He, he does get out because Debbie does pick him up and she takes him to uh, physical therapy. But most of the time he's lying there in that bed, says he does, does some sitting up in a wheelchair. But, uh, well, you know what it's like, Jeffrey. You've been through this whole thing, right? Turn on your mic. Turn on your mic. There you go. What, what were you going to say? Times I don't know. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. What were you gonna say? I I said you know having a stroke and 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 taking. God, there's something wrong with your mic. 
Yeah. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, there's something wrong with your mic. It goes in and out, and it's very low. And I don't know what you do about that. If you can find a way to get into your preferences, I think if you turn off, uh, turn up your volume on your microphone, you'll be fine. I'm trying to. I'm, tr I'm trying to. I can't really f tell you what to do now. But we, maybe we can talk during the week and we can figure this out. Either that, or if you can go to preferences, go to your audio, and I think you can set it there. Uh, hello, Robert. How are you this evening? I'm fine, Alex. Yes yourself uh, i am uh you know i'm getting in the christmas spirit um uh, i guess which is saying fuck santa or something like that uh, uh <laughs> who's that oh that's is that your son jeff yep. hi alex hi okay it's, ah. it sounds a little better now did you do something yeah i unmuted him <laughs> oh I. <laughs> oh no 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 oh. I hope that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, Jeff, uh, what uh, what I want to say is, is the one person here who has had a stroke, is he? Is this pretty par for the course? What he's going through? Um, no. I was very concerned about physical stuff. Yeah. And, and but also, I couldn't read anything mm -hmm. uh it was even difficult to yeah oh uh, i had a lot of things i had to work on at the same time yeah now now you're you're, you're cutting out all of a sudden your audio drops out i don't know what's wrong i think it's something in your settings in your preferences if you can get your son to come in and find the preferences there you can probably adjust it you know? yeah, I think his, his son thought that he was on he was on mute, but he, he thought that was the problem. But that's not the that's problem. That's not the problem. The problem is, is that I think maybe it's it's you're not on auto or something for your for your audio. It's uh, been hard enough for everybody else in COVID that just had to stay home. You know, we make jokes last night about going to the living room and then going to the bathroom and all that yeah. stuff. You yeah, know? But, yeah. But just think if you're now another big degree of that is just think if you're in your bed for a year since this COVID. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, Josh, how you doing? Holiday season. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs> whoop de doo How you doing, Josh? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> you sound excited. <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? Okay. I'm Josh. I, uh, I don't try to get too emotional about anything. <laughs> you know. I wonder if we're going to hear from Kevin tonight in his uh, Christmas persona. Oh, that's right. You know, I uh, don't know about that part. I think he's going to call, but uh, yeah, I don't know about yeah, yeah. Well, Chris, that would be asking too much, I think. Oh, look, Jeff is working Maybe, on his yeah. on his on his Zoom. See, because it says Jeffrey Stein up there. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> wh where did you go today, Robert? What was your day like? Um, you know, be before you accuse me of sitting on my ass and doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did some investing. I actually did some investigative journalism today. Really? I found a, a case of voter fraud. There's this guy who claims that he lives in Florida and he voted there. But <laughs> from what I was able to determine, he's not allowed to live at mar lago due to an agreement <laughs> that he signed years ago. And therefore, oh. he voted in Florida fraudulently, and I think that's a felony, so let's lock him up. Yeah, let's lock him up. What the hell? No, well, don't lock him up too soon. You huh? You can collect your million million dollars from, uh, was it from the Attorney General of Texas? Oh, He's paid, paid a million dollars for cases of, of, of voter fraud. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. let's make up some then, at least. Oh, mm. we don't have to make it up. It's, it's, I it's, got it's, one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. well, you're going to be a millionaire, Robert. I, 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 I'll be seeing you guys. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> what do you think? You know, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, he, what, he, he pardoned another 50 people today? Paul oh, yeah. Manafort. Paul Manafort. Yeah, among yeah. them, Paul Manafort. Um, 
Huh? John Dillinger. (laughs) (laughs) Just about. Jay Simpson. Yeah. Yeah. You get a pardon, and you get a pardon, and you get a pardon. <laughs> uh, it, it has any? Uh, I know the presidents when it's in, they're in their last term, and it's the end of that last term. They, they go through pardoning people, mm-hmm. but did they ever do fifty of them? I can't remember that many. You know. I and, think there. Have- have been that many, but I don't know that they were such high-profile, um, obvious, obvious cases. They were you know, usually perjury and so y- on. And in so in forth. some cases, they were actually drug people who had been actually put in jail for you know forty years for being caught with a joint in the old days, and uh, those were the people yeah. that they gave pardons to people whose sentences were un, uh, unusually high. Okay, uh, but here he's letting murderers out of jail. I mean, yeah. you know, he's letting people. One of the parents of a boy who was killed by those Blackwater guys yeah. uh, put a picture of his son on the web and said, mm-hmm. "This guy's been pardoned for the murder of my son." Yeah, you know, uh, that, that can't be a good feeling. You know, yeah. it cannot be a good feeling. Um, I've, I talked, uh, Tom, I guess I've talked to you recently, but since the election, right? I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if we have or not, because yeah. you must have had a happy fizzies party when that happened, right? Oh, I was very relieved. Still relieved. We yeah. were on a tether's edge of being, uh, I mean, uh, you know, we've had a lot of unusual things this year that, that are, that has mm-hmm. affected our lives. But I think that was one of them that we've forgotten if we were to look back on the past year, and that's the tenseness with which we lived with this election, mm-hmm. being afraid that Trump was going to get reelected. Yeah, you know, it was a real possibility. Well, you know, the guy the guy hasn't yet lost, according to him. Yeah, you know. Well, as people keep saying, imagine if it just came down to one state, you know. Yeah. I mean, yep. you know, things yeah, could be a lot different. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's definitely. But it turned out to be okay, you know, uh, and we'll see what happens. It's going to be entertaining. Next month is going to be entertaining because it's going to be interesting to see if they, uh, if, if there is a, uh, we're going to have to wedge him out of the White House. If they, uh, They're going <laughs> to have to take him. Santa! Santa! Santa. It's Santa. Hello, Santa. Can't, <laughs> you can't give us a big fucking ho, ho, ho? Ho, oh, fucking ho. Oh. Ho, oh, fucking ho. Oh. Right. Hey, ho. Hey, let, ho. Me, let me get Adrian. Hold on. <laughs> oh, <don't. laughs> this is not the night for that. <laughs> right. But you know, you know what it is about Kevin? It is amazing. He doesn't have to put makeup on or anything. All he has to do is put on an elfin hat. And he's Santa, you know. Yeah, and I could be making good money this year, but fucking no. No, do you get it? Are you going to get any of that good COVID money? No. Why? Because that asshole took off on a plane and went golfing. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> now, what do you think about? Isn't it wonderful that you know he he finally decided he wasn't going to pass this uh, nine hundred million dollar uh, package to get money to the American people because he's holding out for $2,000 per person. Oh, all of a sudden he's a good guy. Yeah, all, all of us yeah, all of a sudden he's a good guy. And where was he 2 months ago, 3 months ago when they wouldn't pass this damn thing? Where was he with his $2,000? He stood outside <laughs> the tiger cage, threw a bunch of meat into it and then ran off and opened the doors on the way out. Yeah. Well, I mean, what he's done, what he's done with this thing is he screwed up the money that would have gone out to people any day now because he's make he's put a monkey wrench into it. Now, granted, it's a it's a it's a monkey wrench that I think is well deserved. I often we all said six hundred bucks. What's six hundred bucks? You know, I mean, that's going is that going to pay your rent this month? I don't think so. You know, and um 
So when he came out with $2,000, yeah, but he should have done that months and months and months ago. And he's talking next week. It's only Wednesday right now. Yeah. You know, these people are counting on this stuff, you know, on a week-to-week and day-by-day basis, some people. Checks are supposed to go out next week. The the 6th, they said, yeah. Or not the 6th, but the uh, 26th or 27th, they were supposed to start going out. Yeah. Now they aren't. Well, I'm not going to get any money because um, because I, I I think we make more as a couple than you know is allowed. One hundred fifty thousand if you're a couple, and together we make more than that. But if we well no, we usually uh, 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 file our taxes jointly. So I guess that we have to stick with that or something. But are you going to get any money, Tom? As far as I know, did you, know. you did you get money last time? Yeah, I did. What? Yeah, I, yeah. Well, yeah, I got the twelve hundred. The twelve hundred, yeah. And I actually got it in the form of a check, mm-hmm. which I wrote all kinds of things over all over it before I deposited it. So <laughs> <laughs> you got one of the autographed ones, then. Yeah, I got one of the the, the Trump checks, I, which was surprising to me because. Because, I mean, I have direct deposits set up with Social Security, you know, and and I pay my, my taxes through online. And I don't know why they sent me a check, mm-hmm. but that's okay. I got something I can, can write all over and, yeah. and deposit in the bank. <laughs> well, it's, it's that time of the evening where we do the happy stuff on this program. And that's the report from Dr. Doom. <laughs> Uh, uh, Charlie Wallace, you know how you are always doing obituaries, Tom? Yeah, okay. yeah, Charlie's reporting on the COVID cases. Yes, and he, what's the count in the amount tonight? Oh, what was it? 18,409,000 cases total. Mm-hmm. 207,000 today. Mm-hmm. And then? 3,190 deaths. 325,000 deaths to date. Mm. Oh, boy. It doesn't, and it's not going to get better, you know. Uh, We'll probably hit 400,000 by first of the year. You know, they figure we're not going to actually maybe hit this herd immunity that we hope for until maybe August. You know, is that, and, and even if you get it, Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. I, I I I give up on it all. This has this been the worst year of all our lives? Anybody yep. think of a worse yep. year? Yeah, yeah. How, how, yeah. How, you, Robert, of course, you would agree. How about you, uh, Alan? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, how about you? Uh, how about you, Rocky's pal? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. It's brutal. Just brutal, brutal. Yeah. How about for you, Cap? Uh, how about for you, um, uh, 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 Josh? Because, you know, you, uh, you, you, uh, pretty much. I think you're, you, you have not, seemed to be having problems. You've been working and everything like that, and been getting a paycheck. But it still has it been a bad year for you anyway. Not particularly. Particularly not. No, okay. I mean, yeah. I haven't. I haven't changed much. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't really go. I don't go out and do much anyway because I like to. Yeah. Be around people, so. Yeah. I haven't. You know, I really haven't changed much this year. A little yeah. bit, but not much. How about you, Charlie? It's got. You, you've been. Yeah. yeah. You. It's been. It's impacted you. It's been my worst year financially, for sure, since I haven't been able to umpire. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of your little side job that you do. That, that That's the thing that brings in the income for you, the extra income over your yep. Social Security and things like that. How about you, Kevin? Lousy year? The endless summer. <laughs> and it's my not over. was supposed to go back to school after a couple of months, and she's still home. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and then no extra income this year for, you know, the Santa gig, and uh, yeah, it's been pretty shitty. Yeah, no football, you know. Jeez, oh, 
How about you? How about you, Kevin? Uh, Brian, excuse me, Brian. <laughs> What's that? The uh, year? Yeah. Well, you've had a job. No, no, I mean, just the uh, no job's been good. Job's been good, but you know, luckily, <clears throat> so at the beginning of the year, just before COVID took over, I got a promotion over to the new uh, expansion projects. So I was running manufacturing for sixteen years. So that was twenty four seven job being mm -hmm. a director for manufacturing. So. Uh, like this week, I wouldn't have off for sure. But because this new promotion, luckily I had those flexible schedules for the kids to be here half the day. So I'm here at afternoon or one o'clock so I can be here for anything they need help with uh, virtual learning. So if I was still in my old position, it'd be very hard to get away from work. So I was really well, lucky. Yeah. I said to Marjorie tonight, I said, you know, there and we said we're watching the news and these endless parade of people who you know, are waiting in lines of hundreds and thousands of cars down in L.A. just to get some food, okay? Yeah. And and people saying, you know, I, I've lost everything. I don't, I, you know, I have my restaurant. I don't have it anymore and so on and so forth. And I looked over at her and I said, you know, we're pretty lucky. You know, we haven't taken much of a hit. She's still working. She's working from home. Same job, same pay scale, okay? I'm still getting my same... Um, a monthly uh, social security check and my pension from SAG-AFTRA. So we are not, you know, I said, we're not doing badly. We're kind of lucky in that respect. I said, but geez, you know, to be somebody who's working, who doesn't have a job now because his line of work just isn't there, is terrible. It's just terrible. And how these people in Washington can even play around with that. They should yeah. have no reluctance to give the American people a paycheck, you know? Yeah, in that respect, I feel real lucky because I don't know what, if I was working, I mean, I saw what was going on with the ports today or yesterday yeah. over in England oh, where yeah. the trucks were backed up for 3,000 trucks. Oh, and because France... I can only imagine what the ports here, yeah. you know, the, the incoming... And I used to work at the ports. That's from you know the, the distribution centers, and I know what that was like around Christmas as it was. And when I when I was shipping around Christmas, it was brutal hell. Yeah. And trying to get stuff in and out of the country was hell. And it was getting worse when I left five years ago. I can only imagine what it's like now. Yeah. When yeah. Trying to get trucks in and out of that. Well, in, well and out of the port of Oakland was brutal. But they did it. Brutal. What they did in France. Uh, what they did in France was they st stopped letting trucks in from the UK. Yeah. And uh, which they had to do. The UK is, it's a Petri dish right now. And by the way, the new COVID yep. they found, the, the advanced strain of it, didn't come from China. Came from Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, all the rules change every day. Now, I don't think this is going to affect the vaccine, is it, Brian? They don't think it is. No, I'm not testing. Not, not testing either. Not testing either. But the, the vaccine should still work against this new strain, right? Yeah. 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 It's just a mutation. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you, uh, know, you know what I've noticed that I think is kind of bizarre is the nature of how I've spent money over the last nine months mm -hmm. has changed somewhat in, in that I'm still paying my bills. That doesn't go away. But my purchasing has been through, through either direct payment mm -hmm. or PayPal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still have a $20 bill in my wallet that I know <laughs> uh -huh. I got from the bank in March. Yeah. <laughs> Where the yeah. hell would I spend cash? You yeah. know? So oh, well, what I, I I remember taking a hundred bucks out of an ATM in March, and I still got forty of it. Yeah, you know, no, I so have the, the nature yeah. of what what money I'm spending has has changed radically. Well, yeah. I I wondered where um, I said all of a sudden I said, gee, I've got all this money in my in just my regular account, which I hadn't switched over to my savings, and I, I wrote my business manager. I said, did I get a big chunk of cash? He says, no, you just haven't taken it out and yeah, put it in the right, savings. Right. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. and, it, and it was a ton of money. I mean, I just, yeah, for right. about three months, I, I had $300 in my pocket, and I think I noticed it when I finally got down to my last uh, 40 
Yeah. And that was three right. months later. And now the yeah, same thing right. is true. I took out money a couple of weeks, uh, about a month or two months ago. I've still got $200 of it in my pocket. Yeah. I mean. That was a, uh, that was, a, that was a, actually a story a, a, a few months ago. They were talking about how, um, you know, because people aren't spending money, that there's actually uh, a, a cash shortage. In other words, the money isn't getting right. circulated. And so it's just like it's not circulating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. so so it's difficult to to actually get money out for 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 people who do who need the cash mm -hmm. because the rest right. of us aren't spending it. Uh, no, I'm saying coins, coins. I'm the, saying there's no change around. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what happened. I, years ago, I was taught economics <laughs> about economics and what makes a a area, a poverty area or a slum, and what makes another area rich and vibrant. And it all has to do with the flow of money. Uh, if, uh, if you live on a, in, a, in a neighborhood where people make money and then they go to their local stores and spend money, and it is the amount of times within that community that the money circulates. And if it circulates more than five times within the neighborhood, then you've got a pretty healthy neighborhood. However, if it comes in and then it immediately goes out, which is the, what happens in, in, in poorer neighborhoods, because the people who own the stores don't live in that neighborhood, uh, it just go, it comes in, they give it to somebody, the money goes out, it leaves the area. So, you know, it, it really is... Uh, it is the that is the uh, the so what what you're talking about is is it, what what is that sound coming back here at us? Oh, somebody's got some some audio on. Have you got somebody got audio on? Oh, okay. I think it was probably I I think it was Jeff. He just had to look like it was me. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so when that happens, um, you know, you're right in what you're saying about the money just not flowing through the communities. Uh, and um, yes, uh, Alan. So Amazon Prime is making a fortune. I, that's I, the only way I buy anything. What? I'm, that's the only way I buy anything. Is that Absolutely, same Prime. here. And the, just, I, every other day I'm on it buying stuff. And so, yeah, you know, it's credit card. You know, I, I could probably take a trip around the world a couple of times on the credit card points. Well, I mean, with with the with using using online services, I do my shopping for the for the stuff that I need, right, on Amazon, and then I do my my grocery shopping through Instacart, right. right? Who goes over to Costco and picks up the stuff for me? I haven't been to Costco in a year now. Oh, you know, right. And the only trouble is, I also don't get any points every time I spend money this way with them, but. Uh, and also, if I went there, I might be able to find the toilet paper, you know. <laughs> but, you know, uh, but it's just it. It uh, I I do all my stuff online, uh, you know, and and it's um, uh, I I just I can't tell you how much money I think I've spent this year at Amazon. Uh, yeah. And even yeah. at that, I'm not spending as much as I would be spending if. So I went oh, out right. and said, you know, I think I'm going to drop into Best Buy and see what they got over there. And then I walk out yeah. with, you know, another Roku or something, you know. Yeah, I did the pickup there. I just they ordered it online, and then in an hour they text me, said it's ready. So I just drove over there to one of the parking spots, mm -hmm. pressed a couple buttons, and the guy came out and shoved it in my in my backseat. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, were they doing a good business, do you think, from what you noticed? Yeah, yeah, actually, it seemed like it. They, not as much as before, but at least half of them much as before. So they, they had the, the area was pretty full. Yeah. When's the last, uh, none of you have been to a movie theater in the last nine months, right? Ten months? No. no. I haven't you, done a movie theater in ten years. Probably. Okay, let's say everybody gets vaccinated. All you guys get vaccinated. Okay, we're all immune. Okay, we're not going to get it. Going to go back to a movie theater? No. Not if they're doing new movies online or on, you know, yeah. HBO Max or whatever. Or even if they're doing a pay per view, you would rather sit at home and watch it than go to a go to a because I think everybody's learned there was no advantage to going to the movie theater. Unless you're single, you know, if you're single, 
But, you know, it'd be better to have her at your house, I guess. Well, I think the reason why, the reason for the movie theater is the, is the group experience. It's really wonderful to have, you know, four, 200 people go, ooh, ah, when something happens. But, you know, if you've got five people watching it at home, pretty, pretty much you get that experience. Um, I can't, you know, and I love movies, but I can't see going back to a theater what? I, and you, the wonderful thing about me being able to watch Wonder Woman on Friday is going to be nobody kicking the back of my seat, <laughs> you know, or some baby crying over in the corner, and you got to say, "Why'd you bring a baby to this movie?" You know, or the guy next to you farting. <laughs> That's one of the more pleasant aspects of going to a movie theater. Happens to me whenever I go to a movie theater. And they do terrible, they do terrible projection these days, too. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not like they're giving you a theatrical experience. Like I'm going there because they show it better than TV does. You know, I got the, uh, got two 4K screens, three 4K screens in this house. Uh, uh, I've got uh, the surround sound. I need to go to a theater? Do you know what they shoot up? You know what they show you on that screen up there? 4K. Okay. So, anyway. Yeah. And a, lot, a lot of those movie theaters put in those nice, comfy chairs. Yeah, look at that. Remote. Right there. Ooh, there he is. He doesn't have to go to a movie theater. Yeah. What were you going to say, Brian? Oh, I just said, you know, a lot of those movie theaters around here, they just cut those, you know, the seats in half because they put those big lounge chair, you know, those those comfy recliners mm -hmm. and with a little swing arm so you put your popcorn on. They just spent a lot of money doing that right before COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Start serving wine and everything else. Yeah. A good way to bring bed bugs home. Yeah, yeah. Movie theaters. I miss those, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not missing the movie theater much, you know. Mm -hmm. It, uh, but then again, they haven't had the kind of releases now because of this. They've all been holding off on their big releases, uh, putting them in their pocket until they figured this was over with. Like the James Bond movie was supposed to be out last March, I think. And it's been held off and held off and held off. And now it's been held off till next March. And I'm, I'm just wondering when they're finally going to bite the bullet and say, ah, the hell with it. We'll, we'll put it on pay-per-view. Uh, because I, I just don't think it's uh, it's that uh, that good, you know. So you got a nice home theater there, right, uh, right, Steve? Well, where's yeah. that sound coming from? This is my man cave. Uh, that's your man cave. Oh, uh, uh, no, no oh, girls man. with a Z allowed. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. nice. That's very nice. Uh, I like the leather couch. I could sit on that and smoke cigars. <laughs> yes, you could. Yep. Do you smoke cigars? I guess you do. Hey, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani's selling cigars. He's doing <laughs> what? an advertisement. Rudy really? Giuliani yeah. is doing an advertisement for certain cigar brand. And also for gold coins of some kind or another. I don't trust And for the them. cigars, he said, when you need a good cigar, tell them Rudy sent you. <laughs> I, wouldn't tell, I wouldn't tell anybody Rudy sent me anywhere. but no. <laughs> Unless it was Rudy Kazooty. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If yeah. anybody remembers Rudy Kazooty. He, he was looking for a cigar when he was with that girl on Borat thing. <laughs> easy now. now. Easy now. Yeah, um, uh, that was. I had the worst luck. Didn't he have the worst luck? In like two months time of lousy Six luck. Weeks. He just went bam, 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 bam. <laughs> the movie COVID. What else did he have? What else went there? There was a uh, the Four Seasons lands total lands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. The hair dye. The hair dye. <laughs> the hair dye. <laughs> oh yeah, that was good. You have that much bad luck. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, and then he farted. He farted. I do. I do believe that if our president didn't have just a month left, we would be pulling out the Twenty Fifth Amendment right now, with all the stuff he's doing. This yep. is the, uh, the, the 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 actions of an absolutely crazy man. Mm -hmm. 
He's yeah. nuts. He's so obsessed and he's so you know, focused. What were you going to say, Steve? I'm worried about what's going to happen on the inauguration day. Like I, I'm, I'm afraid he's going to fall off the deep end and just tell his supporters to start shooting. I, I think he's that fucking crazy. So, yeah, yeah. so my question to you is: Aren't you glad to be in Canada? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get a room ready. <laughs> I, I really think they they have to boost the, their security <laughs> for uh, for Biden and uh, Kamala because. I'm worried about their safety right now. Wow. I, I'm re I really am. Yeah. That's what the Secret nuts. Service is for. Um, I mean, I, he might just tell the Proud Boys to start shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I don't know where that sounds coming in from because Jeffrey is, Jeff is, um, is, is muted. So that wouldn't be coming from there. I don't know. Who knows? It's the mystery. We're all excited for, we're all excited for a no duration day but milani is divorce attorney is excited for the day after I think. oh i see yeah <laughs> right right um Big payday for him i think there i think there's a good chance milani is going to dump him oh yeah i think she has been waiting for she's been eyeing the exit for a while now you know uh and uh he's he she's going to kick him out of the house but she can't figure out which house to kick him out of uh, yeah, what house? Yeah. He can't go. He can't go to Mar-a-Lago because they won't let him. No, nope. because he's he spent too much time there this year, more than he agreed to. All right, mm -hmm. and uh, they can't go back to the White House unless maybe there's a spare room at the White House they can hang out in. Maybe you know, if I were if Biden's a nice guy, he could say you can stay with us until you have the dungeon until you Stop find it. you can you can stay with us until you find a job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, sublet a room or something. Yeah, sublet a room. Uh, God, this is this is just. There's got to be a bathroom that's not in use. You know, I I I, 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 you know, as I got I get older and I hit eighty one, I didn't look back at when I was a kid and what things were like and what I expected was going to happen in the world and what's been good and what's been bad, and I never expected anything like. You know, mm -hmm. I just never thought I, why the end of my life does this have to happen? This is the time of my life where I'd like to do a little vacationing. Okay. Traveling. The, the wife and I would like to travel. Can't do it. Yep. Can't do it. I can't even go see my friends. Uh, uh, I, I haven't, do you know, I haven't seen, I've seen him on the show when I do it on Monday. I haven't seen my friend Shecky in almost a year physically and i used to go over and see him every two three weeks you know i'd get on the subway and go right over there you know mainly to get the hell out of dodge and then we would go out and we have some sushi somewhere at this big beautiful sushi bar which has since closed yeah. down yeah you know and yeah and friends friends up in uh, vermont the, our friends in vermont yeah we couldn't uh, go see Lake them this year. yeah we can go see them this year um who else, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I don't leave the house. I mean, I left the house, when was it? I think two days ago. I actually went down to the store to pick up something and then came back home. And that was it. You know, and uh, running the gauntlet of people who were wearing chin straps and, <laughs> you know, uh, using them as yarmulkes, you know, and things like that, you know, but. Uh, it, 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 I just feel I'm taking my life in my hands if I go out, you know? And a, mo and a lot of us here are older. I have a, tend to have an older crowd here. The young child of the group is Josh, I think, uh, tonight. Um, Look. Huh? Oh. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, I think we all feel, I think, Steve, how old are you, Steve? 45 45 so anybody who's under a 50 is kind of you're not safe but you're safer okay it's not that you're not going to get it but if you get it you you can probably survive it a lot better than me i mean i know that my health is somewhat compromised these days uh and it has nothing to do with uh any particular disease but the fact that i had radiation and things like that and it's still affecting my 
creating a certain fatigue in me. What, where's that sound coming from? You guys hear that? Yeah. Yeah, I hear it. Man. Is, is anybody got a speaker or something on? Huh? Oh well. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Well, Brian is uh, is not, uh, and Tom is uh, Tom. Unmute yourself. Let's see what happens if it's maybe coming from okay, you. Okay. How about now? No, it's not coming. Wait a minute. No, is it? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh well. Anyway, um, I, you know this is the last show of the year because after tonight we don't do any shows until we're back oh, on the fifth of January. That reminds me. Yeah. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much. I'm the last person on the planet to wish you a happy birthday. And you know something? It means more to me from you than from, <laughs> from the other, you know, 300 people I didn't know who sent me birthday greetings. Did you get any birthday cards from San Quentin? You want to know something? I'm going to tell you something nice. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Oh, he uh, forgot this year. Yeah, Usually he was sending me. Uh, they didn't execute him, did they? No. I don't think so. Uh, no, they didn't. Um, you see the back of me, that sign, that's all, folks? See that right back uh, there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There. Uh, I, got that, I got that as a gift from Charlene. Oh. And she also sent a gift to Marjorie. Uh, uh, boy, we have that sound again. Who the hell, What the hell is doing that? Only 20 more minutes of Any it. Any 20 more minutes of yeah. it. Anyway, uh, she sent Marjorie a, a plate she did with a picture of a cow on it because Marjorie likes cows. Now, she knows I like cartoons, especially Looney Tunes, and she she knew that. So if you're listening, Charlene, thank you so very much. You know, it was very thoughtful. This uh, is your pen pal in San Quentin? Oh, I, have a pen, I had a pen pal in San Quentin. I, I think the on the air light will light up when they flip the switch in San Quentin. I see. Yeah. Okay. He, um, um, yeah, I got to know this guy who was on death row. He used to call my show. And uh, so I got to know him. I went over and saw him once. And um, uh, he, uh, he used to call me at home on Saturdays. And I would accept the call because, you know. And I'll tell you something, you know, people said to me, well, how can you talk to, do, do you know what he did? And I said, I never tried to find out what he did because then it would alter the way I feel about him. Uh, and so I, uh, it would alter the way I feel about him. And I said, I, I, I just don't know if I want to be able to, to do that, okay? So um, I, I kept this thing going on with him. And I, you know, I said to him, I've never asked you what you did and I've never tried to find out. And he said, well, you know, I'm not in here for parking tickets, you know. And um, I then, then one day we're, we're going, I'm in, over in Richmond where my girlfriend lived. And we're going by the library. And she says, aren't you the least bit curious? And I said, well, I don't know if I want to know. And she said, come on, let's go in and let's just go see if we can find his name in the magazines in the library. So we look up his name, and they say Cosmo, or was, was it, no, it was Red Book. So we went to this issue of Red Book, and it was an article written by a woman called A Kiss from My Killer, and it was about this guy. And the fact of the matter was he was convicted of killing five women, strangling to death with his bare hands. And I go, oh my God! I, I'm talking to this. I'm talking to a guy who strangles women with his bare hands. And so the next time he called on a Saturday, I didn't accept the call, right? And then I started feeling very guilty about it because I said, well, wait a minute. I've been talking to this guy for a year. I know him as a completely different person than the person in the article. OK, uh, I'm sure inwardly he's the same person, but the person I relate to isn't that. So the next time he took a, uh, he called, I took the call and I told him, I said, I got to admit something. And I told him what I had done by not taking his call because I had read this article. And he says, happens to me all the time. 
He said, people find out what I, what I was accused of doing, and they, get, they can't talk to me. And so I kept talking to him. I kept a relationship going with him. I know, oh, Alan, what do you think? Because Alan, you know, was a cop, and he's probably got an opinion about how I handled this. If he's on death row, he wasn't accused. He was convicted. He was convicted, yes. And most of these women he probably knew personally because strangling somebody with your bare hands is not something you can usually do to a stranger. I mean, you know. Well, you know, there is a, there is, I think they convicted him for four, and the fifth one they held in abeyance just in case he skidded out on the other ones, got to, you know, weasel out on the other ones. But he, he uh, the article said that he did all these killings in a period of, I think, four weeks. Wow. Did some in Northern California and then Ooh. went to Southern California and did them. And he did them in a period of, of about four weeks. And uh, that could have been drugs, you know? I mean, I'm not going to say that's an excuse, but I'm saying I'm trying to look for the reason why. It wasn't like he did one, and then later on he did another, and then he did another. Yes, uh, um, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Tom probably has something to say about well, this. Well, I just want to just say that what I liked was that you actually uh, had him write for your well, you're for your website. You had a, a, a column uh, that you had to produce on a website, and it was the, called the, "Dead Man Dead Man yeah, Talking." Yeah, Dead Man Talking. And the interesting thing about that was it had nothing to do w with his, you know, his crime or anything that he did. It was all about what what was life like to be on death row day to day. Yeah, and it was fascinating. Um, I think. I think it's still around. I've, I've seen it sort of like so, someone is actually. You can actually, you can too. go online and, and type in Dead Man, Talking Dead Man Talking by Dean. And uh, there will be some sites that have appropriated it from the site that I had. And, yeah. uh, and, and it, it was fascinating. And I told yeah. him when we started doing it, I said, I don't want you to proclaim your innocence or your guilt or whatever. I said, that's for you to do with your lawyers. I said, what I want you to do is tell us what it's like to live on death row. And the first thing he wrote was, um, uh, the first thing I will tell you is, is that uh, uh, the only time I will tell you this is that uh, I say I'm not guilty, okay? And that's it. And now from here on in, I will never bring that up again, but I just want to put that on the record. And then he started to tell what it was like, and it was fa it was fascinating. I think you remember. I think it's that. one of your 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 best achievements in life. I think Alex <laughs> is getting this guy's story about what what living on death row is all about, and and getting people to really understand uh, what the death penalty really means. Well, I you know it always fascinated me because I was so against the death penalty. Yeah. That to know somebody was on death row, all of a sudden I was coming face to face with it. And I wasn't coming face to face with it with someone who just, you know, got cranky one day and killed somebody. I was talking to a guy who was a serial killer, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that made it even more interesting. And what also was more interesting is very intelligent guy. Mm -hmm. Used to be a cameraman for CNN in Alaska, mm. you know. Wow. So, I mean, it, 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 you, you have a whole bunch of different uh, feelings about this. Uh, uh, Josh, what, what do you think? Did I do the right thing by going ahead and continuing the relationship with this guy, or should I have just said, uh, you know? Suddenly, my back orange is in an empty jar. Well, I said... That's uh, up to people. Well, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I have a problem with it. I still have a problem with it. I guess that doesn't mean you know that if the guy was guilty I thought it was you know like I forget about it or whatever but I mean I don't really know if he was or he wasn't. Yeah. I mean if he wasn't he wouldn't be the first person in this country to be on death row that was innocent. I mean I think we have you know pretty good uh, evidence of that. I mean I think most people obviously that are well, well, I Obviously, I, sp I spent my whole life, as Tom probably remembers, being pretty much against the death penalty and obsessed by being against mm -hmm. the death penalty. Uh, and so to all of a sudden have a firsthand experience with somebody on death row who had committed some heinous crimes 
was fascinating to me. It, it taught me a lot about what I was arguing against. And I, I, even in his case, I would argue against it, you know. And, um, and then I also said to myself, well, what if someday they do actually strap him down on that gurney and uh, slip him the juice? How am I going to feel about that? You know, when that happens, because I'm getting a personal relationship with this guy. I mean, when we talked on the phone, it was as two friends talking to each other on the phone. And I, I never asked him, like, uh, how's it going? Because it's pretty much the same day to day on death row. This was a guy who was six foot six tall, okay, uh, who was living in a cell that was six feet long. His feet literally hung out the end of the cell when he was sleeping at night. I mean, it's really, you know, so it, it, it was fascinating to me, and I learned a lot from it. But I haven't been able, it's been rather hard to communicate with him over the years since I moved back to New York. Yes, uh, uh, Alan? So fascinating is a lot of people were fascinated by killers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you've heard of the author Joseph Wamba? Yeah, yeah. He was a... Los Angeles police right. detective sergeant. Mm -hmm. And a lot of his books and movies are based on real mm -hmm. things, things that he went through, you mm -hmm. know, the, the onion field. I mean, a couple cops were kidnapped and one was shot and killed and the other one escaped. And, and, uh, you know, it, uh, a, a lot of that stuff. So I'm surprised you didn't be, start writing crime novels or something. Well, no, because I, that wasn't my, that wasn't my, my mission, I, I care, for some reason, ever since I was a kid, because I have this great fear of death, the idea of putting somebody to death just didn't seem right to me. It seemed like there were much more appropriate, uh, uh, I mean, keeping a guy in prison for the rest of his life, I think, is crueler than putting him out. You know, yes. uh, if you want him to pay for his crime, stick him in a prison for the rest of his life. Absolutely. Would you agree with me or disagree with me, Robert, on that one? How have you felt about it? I'm against the death penalty. I, I think putting him in a cell with an insurance salesman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Or, or, or making Trump his cellmate. That might be uh, uh, appropriate punishment. You know, I mean, I you just... Have get, you have to get the orange dye off of your bed sheets all the time yeah, for his hair. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. <laughs> Uh, but Sounds like he'd be good at making fresh squeezed orange juice to me. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, uh, as we kind of come to the end of this year, um, uh, any hopes and wishes for the coming year? Um, yeah, Je I mean, Jeff, can you can you see if you can talk to us here, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. I've got, you know, I'm very hopeful that everybody gets the not get sick and, and that they can start moving around and visiting people and seeing other things. Mm -hmm. There are certain benefits. About and you must have also had a wish that your mic would work because it's working perfectly now. Yep. Well, maybe Andrew, you know, he came over and tried to fix it. So. Yeah, well, it's, it's much better. It's much better. How about you, Robert? We what, have to pay him. What's your wish for the I'm coming just, year? Uh, I'm I, actually I'm hopeful that I, I don't take the small things in life for granted that I probably took for granted, mm -hmm. like seeing friends and like going to a record store and going to a library and things that I enjoy going to a ball game, you know, mm -hmm. like some of those things that I just started to take for granted now that they were taken away from me, you know, it's I hope I learn a lesson from it and really truly enjoy things again how about you alan um i'm i'm hoping to get the shot whenever possible and get some normalcy back in the world i guess i i'm with robert there's a lot of things that i took for granted and i've had a lot of time like we all have to think about them and yeah there's uh, a lot of stuff i want to do yeah how about you brian yeah i think along the same things uh, a lot of car shows and stuff like that that we didn't go to this year. So there's a lot of <clears throat> a lot of old timers and a lot of Hall of Famer guys down in LA and up here that I haven't seen all year. So 
finishing up another car here, and it's uh, yeah. I'll be excited to go next year. But we're only like one percent so far with the vaccine. It's going to take a while, so I think everyone's got to be patient next year. Yep, and keep keep uh, wearing those masks and everything. Yeah, uh, uh, how about you, Steve? What do you what are you hoping for in the in this uh, coming same year? Same as everybody is saying here. Yeah. yeah, I want to go to a concert. I want to go watch a ball game or a hockey game. You just want normalcy. I I miss all that. Yeah, me too. Char- Charlie, what's your yeah. what's your wish for the coming year? Oh, I wish I could get back on the softball softball field. Mm-hmm. Make a little make a little money. Maybe take a vacation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's still about uh, what eighteen states I haven't been to yet, so I need to. Travel you ever been to right, New York? Charlie, you're always wrong anyway on the softball field, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't mind being wrong. <laughs> uh, how about how about uh, how have you ever been to New York? Yes. Oh, okay. been to New York twice. Oh, good. good. Once to Long Island and then once to New York. Well, if ever you want to come out here, we got a room. Okay. Oh, thank you. Alan. Yeah. Well, that's the least I can do for a guy who's on the show every single night for the last <laughs> four years, five years. Brian, Charlie must be a friend. Man, <laughs> I live across the goddamn river. I didn't get such an invitation. Well, no, when you can get invitation. over here, come on over and I'm we'll have some staying. dinner. I've had dinner with Jeff. Hell, we'll have Jeff come down. You'll come over and we'll all go out and have dinner. That'll be what we'll do to celebrate. That sounds, that sounds like the yeah. hope for 2021. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. How about you, Tom? I'm there. Well, just looking for the days when I can say that I'll, I didn't die before uh, before Biden became president. So yeah, <laughs> you know. yeah, yeah. But I'm looking forward to the shot. And as a home care worker, uh, it looks like uh, probably be somewhere January, February. So uh, uh, Kevin, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Tony in Queens, mm-hmm. all us home care workers, we're we're sort of head in line so yeah yeah something to look forward to yeah well i have a little cough today i wonder if i'm coming down with the COVID. i don't know uh john you know what I- i'll tell you i'll tell you i'll, I'll wake up during the night mm-hmm. and i'll have like this tenseness in my chest yeah. and i'll start stressing over it. Uh, yeah exactly josh oh, what is it what is it josh what are you hoping for this year i'm just gonna keep going same as always. Same as always. And how about you? Uh, 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 I don't know. I'd, uh, like, I'd like to take more of you. This year, right? <clears> yeah. <throat> and Santa, how about you? Normalcy. Normalcy. Yeah. I, th- I think that's what we I all. Got rid- I got rid of Trump for you, so I don't know what else I can do for you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. But I think that what we all are looking forward to is a sense of normalcy. I think what everybody has said they Brian wanted was normalcy. Him. Hey, get, look, get, get what, what is uh, that's a picture Brian, of, of, of uh, did she do a picture of me? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a picture of me. What, I'm always had one hair going up for some reason. That's me, <laughs> that's, that's me watching the show. Oh, She's I see. Girl. Oh, okay. And there's the computer with the with the people oh, on the well, screen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> when did she I do this? I didn't tell her to do this. She, she just came up to me and gave this to me last night. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah. That's terrific. That's terrific. I think that's wonderful. Hey, well, listen, I want to, I, I thank you and also a lot of the other people who are probably watching, like Patrick and Tony and so on, and, and uh, um, um, John Larkin. I, uh, I'm going to miss people. Uh, Charlene Martinez, uh, uh, of course, uh, and, and, uh, uh, all, but all of you who participated in this program over the years. And uh, hope to see you back here when we come back on January 5th after we take some time out, uh, which I can actually use, to be honest with you. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Holidays. Uh, Let me see here. Did I leave anything out? Oh, yeah, and a Happy New Year to all of you. Bye. Okay, that's it. That's our uh, citizen panel for this year, okay? We're taking uh, uh, the rest of this week off, the next week is off, and then we're back on the 5th of January with more 
of this little gathering that we do. In the meantime, as always, I'll see you on the 5th. Okay, we may come back, by the way, on, um, on uh, the, uh, New Year's Eve, we may do a show. Uh, we're thinking about it. So be on the lookout on my Facebook page for that, all right? Uh, but we'll see you again in the coming year. And uh, everybody, have a happy whatever you're celebrating, but do it safely. And uh, if you see her, tell her I love her. And please, whatever you do, for your fellow person, wear a mask and be safe out there. Happy New Year.